Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and I'm tired of being a sad ham. So I got my GMRS license. I figured it couldn't be that hard. <laughs> anyway, today we are going to talk about a first look. It's the Baofeng UV9G. It is a GMRS license radio from Baofeng directly. We're going to talk about some of its features, including its waterproof capabilities, and we are going to throw this thing in water for 30 minutes to see how it does. Let's get started. Your source for amateur radio news, reviews, and tech overviews. This is Ham Radio Dude. Now, the Baofeng UV9G is a new radio from Baofeng, and as I mentioned, I got this directly from Baofeng, and this might look kind of like a similar radio you have seen in the past. If you follow Ham Radio Dude episodes, you might have seen the UV9R, which looks just like this, but also maybe even the UV9R+, Plus, which looks exactly the same as the UV9R. However, in just a moment, we're going to go over some of the differences I already immediately notice about the UV9G. It looks like there might be some upgrades and improvements, and uh, we're going to take a look here right now at the specifications, so let's go to the overhead. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever seen a Ham Radio Dude episode where I have an overhead, you might know that the overhead quality of my camera is absolute garbage because it's the worst camera that I've ever had, the Canon G7 Mark III. I'll continue to put them down as a company until they learn to fix their issues. Today we brought out the big guns, we're using the Sony because I think the Sony's a little bit better. Anyway, what do you get with the UV9G? You get a user manual. You get the radio itself with an antenna. And this antenna here is uh, just your standard Baofeng antenna. Uh, one thing I do want to make a note of here is there is an FCC ID on this radio. And I think I've looked this up in the past because this radio, I believe, has the same internals as this radio, as well as this radio. Anyway, so we're going to look up that ID in just a little bit here. But you're also going to notice maybe there's a little orange grommet around here. And that's because this radio, the, the UV9G, is advertised as IP67 rated. That means it's uh, capable of being submersible into water up to one meter for 30 minutes, as well as uh, should be dust protected. Now, how do they do it? Well, these screws here, when you take these screws off and you, you disassemble these covers, there's a nice fine washer in between, or uh, not a washer, but... Uh, a nice fine piece of material in between here that helps prevent the water from coming in. This also prevents the water from coming into the radio. Additionally, you'll see here where the programming cables used to go, and they use a different programming cable system, just like that. You're going to see here that this is covered, and the reason it's covered is to prevent water from going into this spot here. So they've done a few things to basically prevent water from entering the radio. I will say, in all fairness... I have submerged the UV9R into water, and I had a couple of these. The UV9R Plus did a good job, and you'll notice this damage here. This was from me taking this apart. This has nothing to do with the radio itself. But this radio survived no problem. This radio survived underwater no problem. But I did have one UV9R that did not survive underwater. However, I also want to make a note that the Baofeng logo on the radio Baofeng sent me is a lot more official looking than this one, and it could be that they just changed their logo. Also, though, it looks like they slightly redesigned the case here, so as you can see here, you know, these grooves are a little thicker for the speaker, and these ones are a little thinner. Let's see if I can bring that out. Also, it'll be hard to tell, but even the, though the keypads look the same, I could tell you that they appear to be a little bit different. This one thing seems to be a little bit thicker and a little stiffer to push, which might mean that they've made a little bit of a change to it to help prevent water from coming into the radio as well. I'm not sure, but we're going to test it out and we'll find out in just a bit. Anyway, so you get the radio, you get the antenna, you get a battery. And I know I'm going to go over this and maybe drive my point home on this, but this battery is a Baofeng BL9. It's 7.4 volts, 1800 milliamp hours. This this has been tested before. I have tested this battery before. It tests at 1800 milliamp hours. So when you get companies that come in like Merkit, not that I'm naming you out or calling you out Merkit, that say, hey, this model BL9 is 2200 milliamp hours, and I've tested this one before. This is only 1800 milliamp hours. It will never be 2200 milliamp hours because Merkit is lying to you. 
directly from Baofeng, it's 1,800 milliamp hours. So anyway, they have labeled this correctly, and that, that is what it is. Uh, this battery is capable of being underwater. Now, I'm going to make note before we submerge it underwater that these are very shiny right here. When we're done submerging in water, you'll see that this positive here will end up actually getting a little corroded. And that seems to be normal with all my underwater tests. So you got those three things so far, the battery, the radio, the antenna. You do get a charger here, and I've never had a problem with this charger. This is the same charger that comes with the UV9R and the UV9R+. Plus. The model CHR9700. Anyway, it's 10 volts, 500 milliamp hours. One of the things that Baofeng sent to me was this programming cable. And I thought uh, maybe they just sent me this programming cable so I had a programming cable. That's very typical when people send me products. I went ahead and I jumped online and I took a look. And actually, for the $40 price range that this radio is, it does come with this cable included. Now, the $40 price range seems fair. Let me just kind of point out why real quick. The UV9R Plus, which I determined was the same radio as the UV9R, uh, these were both about $32, and I don't believe they came with programming cables. So here you're getting this radio for $40, and it comes with a programming cable. The math is right about there. What's so different about these radios is these radios did ham radio, amateur radio, and this one is going to be locked down for GMRS. So let's talk a little bit more about those statistics. Oh, and you get this cool little belt clip, which I'll show you how to install this belt clip since it's a little bit different. You're going to see here, I just took this little piece out of here and I'll put the screw in. And you're also going to notice that the battery is not attached. So that's kind of nice that every time you take this off, the belt clip doesn't come off with it. Anyway, now you got this here and essentially you run down and you could hear it click into place. Now you could do this or you could turn it like this. And essentially you could position your radio with the belt clip any way you'd like. There you go. I am, for the sake of this tutorial, oh yeah, I want to mention that too. Oh, it's not coming off. There we go. It's a lot more difficult to come off, which is good because if you're tracking through water or field or something, radio might tend to come off. That's not going to happen with, uh, with this radio here. Anyway, I'm going to take that off just for the sake of this video here. Let's go ahead and talk about a few more features here. I had asked Baofeng if there was something they wanted me to hit on with this radio. And they said, yeah, just talk about our different groups that we have. And I think I know what they're talking about. So if I go ahead and I turn on this radio, I'm going to be presented with what channels I'm on. Now, if this is your first Baofeng radio, I'm going to give you a couple of pointers, but this isn't really a how-to tutorial, more of an overview. Um, you could change the channels up and down by using up or down arrows. And you could see right now, this is the A band on top for, for the case of this demonstration. And this is the B band on the bottom. You can see I'm changing the B band right now. But what if I wanted to change the A band? Uh, you could hit the exit button and you'll see the arrows right here. You can go up and down. So that advice is free. Anything after that will cost you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But let's say I want to give you one more thing real quick here. Then we'll talk about these channels. Let's say for some reason you have your radio, you turn it on, and it goes into this mode where you see frequencies. This, this is known as frequency mode, and this is common with Baofeng radios. I have it in this one, and I have it in this one. But what is different is, typically in frequency mode, you can transmit. Baofeng has locked transmit capabilities even on GMRS frequencies in frequency mode. So you could use this as a scanner, as you heard. but you still can't transmit on any frequencies, legal or not. Uh, that was probably a good move on their part. But if you're in this mode and you don't know how you got in there, turn off the radio, hold down that menu button, the blue button, and go ahead and turn the radio back on. Now you're back in your channel mode. 
Let's talk about those channels. Hi, Ham Radio Dude here, and you know what I decided? I just watched my video and I decided this part of the episode sucked, so I started kind of over, and I'm going to explain this to you just like this. Here is the radio. Here's your channels. Right now we're currently on channel 2, but channels 1 all the way up to 22 are your standard GMRS channels, or what I call simplex channels. And basically, those channels are hard set into this radio. And when we get to channel 23, we go up to 30, these are your repeater or your program repeaters, typically. Now, what those are is you could usually have 50 watts. This radio does set three and a half watts. But when you get to channel 31, all of a sudden you have a do-it-yourself one channel. And this repeats all the way up to channel 54. What these do-it-yourself channels are, I'll give you a demonstration here in just a second, but what they do is they are channels 23 through 30 on repeat. So you have essentially on channel 31, you have channel 23, 24, 25, 26, and you can modify those. So you have your this set of repeater channels, you have your do-it-yourself set of repeater channels that repeats multiple times up to channel 54. It allows you to be able to put in things like uh things like different uh, ctcss tones or dcs tones uh, essentially it allows you if you're traveling from here to arizona and they have the same repeater frequency but different tones you'll be able to have different tones in there so you don't have to, to worry about programming it uh, when you get there or changing your repeater uh, tones uh, on the fly hopefully that helps and i'm going to give you a de demonstration via photo as well and, and, you know, of course, if it did still suck here, you're going to let me know in the comments below. I'm quite used to it by now. So they have these do-it-yourself channels, and you could actually go through and you could you could set those CTCSS tones and DCSS or DCS tones uh, in the radio. Let's see if we could actually do it right here, though. So here I am, and I'm just going to use an example, do-it-yourself 23, and I go into menu. And this is your your typical Baofeng menu. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the, uh, we'll just call it the receive right now. And I'm going to hit menu. And that brings me down here. And I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to turn it to 107.2. And then I'm going to hit menu again, which saves it. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if it's saved. It did save, so great. Now my do-it-yourself 23 channel has a 107.2 CTC SS receive. They say the maximum range of these radios on, on simplex or radio to radio is about five miles, and I could see that. Uh, it just depends, though, on a, quite a few variables, but I could see that. It's I guess it's realistic is what I'm saying. And I say that it's realistic in the sense that if you were in a wide open field that was miles and miles across, or maybe like a lake, great place for an ip67 rated radio uh yeah if you're on a lake and you have clear line of sight for five miles you should be able to make a contact with somebody across the lake provided there's no interference in between uh anyway so let's go ahead and now that we see the radio let's take a look at the programming software here real quick before we submerge this thing into water now i do want to show you real quick you're gonna need some kind of flathead screwdriver or something flat to to open this radio to put the programming cable on once you take that off you're going to see here actually i want to show you the inside this is what i was talking about there's a little bit of a, a rubber grommet here if you will and that rubber grommet really holds a, a tight seal onto here so water and moisture doesn't get into here again in the past i have tested this out and when i had this thing underwater for 30 minutes there was essentially no moisture in here. And if there was, it was such a tiny bit, I was able just to wipe it off and it was fine afterwards. But anyway, so now you have this programming cable and let's go ahead and take that programming, or excuse me, the programming connectors. And it's different from a standard programming connector that you would find on something like a Baofeng UV5R. In the sense that this one uses contacts. I think the reason they used contacts was contacts are a little bit uh, more durable when it comes to not letting water in if you will less susceptible to having water come in there we go anyway so then you have this here and there's three little there's three little contacts that pop out here 
Uh, the, the radio, or excuse me, the programming cable is only going to go one way. And then I, I guess what you got to do, and I don't know why they don't just include a screw in here, but I guess what you got to do is you got to unscrew this. Hopefully you don't lose the screw. And then you got to screw it in. This is very common with Motorola type radios to have some kind of uh, contact system, if you will, for a programming cable. And then go ahead and screw it in. You don't have to screw it too tight. It's fine. Anyway, go ahead then and plug this into your USB. And uh, we'll get our favorite programming software started up. Okay, so I started up uh, my favorite program, Chirp. And I was hoping that maybe Chirp would actually read this radio. I, will, I go to download the radio. I originally clicked UV9R and this failed, unfortunately. So I did try a couple other ones and I couldn't get anything to work. Uh, let me know if you do get anything to work. For example, the A58, which I, I doubt it would. Um, but immediately it'll clone and it'll say it's not the right data. So I ended up having to download Baofeng's software. Here I am in the Baofeng programming software, and I want to show you a couple of things. First off, I had spoke about these different groups that Baofeng was starting to incorporate. And when you read the radio, if you go to modify the frequencies on those channels that are already inputted, channels 1 through 54, you can't actually modify the frequencies. Here I am, I'm trying to type in here, and you can't modify the frequencies. So these are, if you will, hard set frequencies that aren't just going to be modifiable. But you could do things like modify the CTCSS tones in here, like I, I kind of had mentioned earlier, or you can modify the names. So for example, if, if all your buddies are hanging out on GRMRS channel 1, and you want to call that like The Hangout or something like that, uh, that might be a little long, but you could like, the HNG or whatever, you could actually modify the name here. But where this actually starts to come in handy is it's nice that you can't, uh, if you can't modify that. One thing I will tell you, and I should have said it just a moment ago, before you make any changes here, before you go too crazy, I always recommend going and hitting the save button after you read the radio. When you read the radio and it tells you what information's on the actual radio, and then you save the information, you have a backup copy in case you do something so silly that you just have to restore that original file from the from the radio, or what we might call a code plug. But anyway, if you continue down here, like I mentioned, you still can't modify anything until you get to channel 55. On channel 55, this is where you can start adding stuff. And for example, I'm going to add this frequency that's right above channel 55 and 54. Now, you can see here I wrote uh, 462.7250, and you're going to notice that I can't actually type anything in here. So what essentially is happening is this is locked down. So I'm able to change anything on channels 1 through 54 except the frequency. So I could change the PL tones. I could, I could change whether or not it's high or low power. Uh, unless it's a low power channel, they won't allow me to change those because obviously those are channels that are locked out to high power. Um, I could change whether or not it's in the scan list. Uh, I could change the push to talk ID. I could add, like I mentioned, add it to the scan list or not. I could change the channel name. But when I get down here to channel 55, I'm basically only adding channels to receive. As you can see here, I can't put anything in the transmit frequencies. So I could, I could then type in here. I could type in amateur radio frequencies here, and I'm not going to be able to transmit. You know, I would still have to set a CTCSS tone so I could listen. You could then, and you get everything the way you want it. You could then go ahead and click write. And when you write this to the radio, it's going to do its little thing, progress, and it's it's going to write. And then when you go back to the radio, uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Those channels will be modified as you modified them, or they will actually be uh, added as you added them. We'll take a look at that in just one second. I wanted to show you one more thing real quick. I just wanted to jump over to baofengradio.com and just mention a couple of things here. First things first, this is the UV9G. It's an IP67 waterproof radio, as we mentioned, that's $40. And if you go to their website to buy this radio, you're going to see a 10% off coupon. The 10% off coupon will save you a couple of bucks on the radio. Also, there's free orders on shipping over $100, so consider that as well. 
but you're also going to see that there's no reviews on this radio. The reason there's no reviews on this radio is this is a new radio uh, for for Baofeng. Uh, what I can tell you is I've tested the same radio that was uh, advertised as the UB9G or the UB9R, excuse me, or the UB9R Plus. Uh, and this radio is going to meet the standards and specifications that, that they're going to say. Uh, we're going to test that waterproof rating, though, because as I mentioned, I had two that passed and one that didn't. Uh, the nice thing about this radio and why I really brought you here, though, is I want to show you what comes with the radio one more time. Before I mention, this is all the stuff that comes with the radio. And one thing that typically comes with Balfangs is going to be the headset microphone. And I never liked it. I always throw them out or I give them away or whatever. So instead of the headset microphone, they gave us the programming cable. And I, again, I think that's really nice. Uh, but anyway, you know, we talked about the 30 GMRS pre-programmed channels, the do-it-yourself channels, the NOAA weather radio channels. I think that, by the way, I also did test the, the power ratings and they are the GMRS standards. So we know that this thing is locked out for GMRS only. We know that it's up to the GMRS standards. I think the only thing left for us to do is throw this in the water and see how this does for the next 30 minutes. And then we're going to maybe say goodbye to this radio. And we're starting now at 6.19 p.m. All right, here we are. We are now at 30 minutes with this radio here. And give me just a moment. I got to turn off that alarm. I am going to move this over very carefully. And as you can see, here we are. We have the Baofeng radio. Uh, it still is powered on. If we go to a NOAA weather radio station... I think it's a one. So the radio is still receiving, no problem. Let's go ahead and just kind of pat it down here so we can get it dry. And we'll take a look at it overall. But that was 30 minutes. Unfortunately, there was a point where my video recording stopped and uh the wa the radio did stay in the water during that time um however like i said i've done plenty of videos on the uv9r the uv9r plus they're all essentially the same radio even if you look at the ice uh the fcc id they're the same fcc id the only difference that i mentioned here is that this casing is a little bit different and my assumption is that the casing that they had here is probably designed a little bit better for this ip67 rating You'll, you'll notice here the corrosion on the battery terminal, and that, again, is common with any radio, Baofeng, Alinko, whatever radio I've put into the water, it's always had corrosion on the positive terminal after placing it in the water for uh, 30 minutes. One thing I will make note of is uh, even though it's usually corroded, it's usually green, this one's white. So I don't know if that's a little bit of battery uh, acid or what it could be. Uh, but I did want to make a note of that here. Uh, otherwise here, the speaker is going to sound a little dull for, for just a little while until it dries out internally. Now we could take a blow dryer to it, but I'd rather just let it dry out. 
let's go ahead and take the battery off with the radio powered off. Internally, you could see that there is a little bit of water in here, especially down here, but mainly there's no water inside where the terminal connects. And if we look at the battery, it's kind of kind of going to be the same way. Uh, there is a little bit of moisture on that battery, like two little drops on there. Uh, we can go ahead and just kind of wipe it off here. We'll do the same thing on this portion of the radio. In fact, I have a microfiber cloth that'll get in there a little bit better. Now, let's see how it did where the connectors go for programming the radio. And there is just a little bit of a moisture in here, uh, as indicated right here. Anyway, wipe that down and we're good to go. Let's go ahead one more time and plug in this radio just to make sure that it still works. And then we'll get an overall rundown summary of this radio. Now, one thing I should mention, too, is you could always scan the radio by just holding down the, the star key or the asterisk key. And as you can see now, it's scanning. This radio is working fine. What we'll do is we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to make sure that everything is still working. As sometimes when the radios sit overnight after they've been submerged in the water, they'll no longer work. Hey, it's the next morning, and uh, yeah, this thing is completely functional. The only real indications that this was submerged in water was that corroded battery like we talked about would occur. And uh, there's a little moisture there in that battery or in that flashlight terminal. If you didn't know, this is a flashlight right here. Uh, this thing sounds just fine. Everything seems to be functional. Here's what I'm going to tell you. $40, waterproof. Throw it in the water. Have a blast. Pull it out. Talk to your friends. All that good stuff. It's a pretty good radio for 40 bucks. Uh, so if you're looking for a radio that might be a little more, more durable than something like a UV5R, I think this is the one that you're going to want. Uh, however, I understand that the UV5R is the choice of many people because it's unlocked. I'm not here to make that debate. I'm just here to debut this radio right here, the UV9G. I'm Ham Radio Dude. If you did like this episode, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And if you thought it sucked, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Either way, it helps me in the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, 73. Hi, I'm Ham Radio Dude, and I'm no longer a sad ham.